I'm Johnny Greenwood and this is Richard Tognetti and we're here to hear the ACO play. Do a little concert and premiere uh, Johnny's new piece called Water. <laughs> I only knew them by reputation from reading reviews of their concerts in London and so many people were describing them as the best chamber orchestra in the world and then it fell out that the Radiohead tour finished in Australia and a happy coincidence they asked me to write something for them and, and be in residency and it was just amazing, it was, so really, it, it was so good that I slightly feel like I didn't make the most of the opportunity, I should have, you know, I was just so surprised how good they sound and how excited I was to be in the room with them that um, I kind of should have done it more I think. But having said that we did lots of rehearsals and I got to hear them practice a lot um, and they're just very inspiring. Richard especially is just as a musician just don't know, don't know where it comes from. It's just so strange to watch him pick up a violin and play. Well, we'd fallen in love with uh, Johnny's music, like a lot of people have. Johnny was finishing this tour and, and had this time, and, and so it, it's rare for a composer, any composer, to have access to an orchestra, you know, in a laboratory situation. It's normally you write, and then you just have to present to an orchestra who's got no time, they quickly learn it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like, it could be months of work, and then it's all over in an afternoon. You hear it the first time it's played and then that's it's, it's strange it's a bit someone described it as being like a planning a firework display you kind of lots and lots of planning and then it's just it's over in the length of the, the piece of music so it was amazing to have you know workshop time and get to hear lots of things and have the luxury of being able to edit things out and, and get get it right the piece was written it's based around this Indian drone instrument like, called the tempura and something about the sound of the texture reminded me of this um, couplet in a poem by Philip Larkin about water where he talks about um, any angled light um, can diverge endlessly when it held up in a glass of water and there's something about that image and the sound of the tempura that just clicked for me, just work. <laughs> I dabble in, you know, electronic music, like dabble. And of course, Johnny's an absolute expert. Um, so I was hoping that we'd get a sort of, you know, world uh, of electronic music um, coming into our acoustic world. But I have to say, in the, in the end, I'm kind of relieved that Johnny sensibly <laughs> withdrew from, from that line because it's always incredibly complicated and things go wrong and it's really hard to mix and the acoustic instruments often lose out and so I think it's a stroke of genius that he came up with this tanpura idea because it's a totally different sound I mean it's rare to hear it mixed in a you know string work When we were rehearsing, we would send uh, a recording of the rehearsal to Johnny for immediate... Um, actually, we pretended that Johnny was in the room and we even spoke to him over the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's very peculiar to put ideas on paper and send them to somebody and then have them turn them into music. Uh, it's, but that, to me, it still feels like a very modern idea. I don't know why. There's something about it that's just so kind of 
so peculiar and so dependent on the musicality of the people that you send the ideas to that makes it so far removed from what I do with Radiohead, which is all about recording and repetition and things being pinned down. Um, but when ideas are on paper and you're relying on the musicians to put them across, it, it gives it a certain life that you don't get with recording. You know, so that, that's why I'm so addicted to hearing live orchestras like this. This world of classical music is for me all about the room and the concert and, and every performance being different and every uh, thing being unrepeatable. Whereas with Radiohead it's about arranging and recording the songs as well as we can and every time you hear them back it's going to be the same and it's the best you can get it. Um, and with orchestral things it's different, it's, it's just, you can't pin it down, it's too strange to pin down, you can't commit to, you know, it coming out of two speakers and that's all it is, it's, it's kind of, it's a, it's a bigger, stranger thing than that. Mm -hmm. 